The scotch opening is e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4. And here black does want to take the d-pawn, that's the best move. And white usually recovers the pawn now with knight takes d4, but the move c3 is the subject of this video. This is called the Goring Gambit, and I recently faced this as black. Um, I decided to decline the gambit. I just don't know the theory. I didn't want to take the c3 pawn and give white the option of either uh, playing knight takes c3 and playing that position, or even bishop to c4 and playing it like a Danish gambit where these knights have already been developed. So I don't know the theory, so I decided to decline it. And when I looked at the, the database after my game, I found out declining it with the move d5 is actually the most popular move in the position. So this is what I'm going to play, d5, when I'm facing this Goring Gambit. And then uh, e takes d5 is sensible here. Um, don't worry about other moves. For example, if white plays e5, then it is safe to take the pawn on c3. And if, if knight takes c3, you can play d4 and then maybe knight b5 to attack your d-pawn, but bishop to c5 to defend it, and you're just playing a pawn up in this position, and white really doesn't have compensation. So pushing that pawn to e5 and bypassing the d-pawn doesn't help. Uh, c takes d4 doesn't really help either. Um, you can just play d takes e4 and uh, threaten the other knight, threaten the knight on f3, uh, maybe knight to g5 to attack your e-pawn, but then knight f6 to guard it, knight c3 attacks it again, um, and you can play h6 here and give up the e-pawn because you have the uh, d-pawn here. And so again, you're just going to be playing this position uh, a pawn up, and white really doesn't have compensation. So back to the position after d5, uh, white should play e takes d5, and you recapture the pawn with your queen. So here's the point of playing like this, playing d5. Uh, you get your queen out early in the center of the board, and it cannot be attacked. White doesn't have the natural move knight c3 here. So your queen is actually quite well placed. Um, white should play c takes d4 and accept this isolated pawn, um, he does want to open up the c3 square for knight to c3 to gain a tempo on the queen. Um, and white is going to get an isolated pawn anyway if he wants to recover um, his pawn. Um, he can take the pawn with his knight, but then knight takes knight, and either pawn takes knight or queen takes knight. Both are, of those are going to result in the same isolated pawn position, but with fewer pieces on the board. And when you have an isolated pawn, you don't want to trade pieces and go into an end game where the pawn becomes very weak. You want to retain your pieces on the board. So white should just play c takes d4 here. And then a good move is bishop to g4. That's what I played in my game pin the knight, put pressure on it with both your bishop and your queen. Uh, my opponent played bishop e2, and then I castled long, and um, I've got pressure, more pressure on that d-pawn. Uh, by the way, there is a tactic to watch out for. Instead of castling long, don't make the mistake of thinking you can win the d4 pawn by removing this defender because after bishop takes bishop attacking the queen, queen takes pawn is a mistake. It drops your queen to bishop takes c6 check, removing the defender of your queen. So just uh, castle in this position. There are other moves, but I castled and it seems fine according to the engine. Uh, my opponent played knight c3 to attack my queen. Um, and I made a mistake. I, I recommend just retreating it to d7 seems good and to continue to play from there. Um, I played bishop to b4 in my game, and I think my bishop is just misplaced there. My opponent castled, and the knight is now uh, threatening the queen again. It's no longer pinned. Uh, I took the knight, but that just fixed my opponent's pawn structure, so he no longer has that isolated pawn. 
Um, so I think it's it's not the best square for the bishop since uh, white is going to castle anyway. So I recommend just playing queen to d7, uh, and then just as a sample line, maybe white will push the d-pawn to attack the c6 knight. Uh, but then you can play bishop takes knight here, and if the pawn takes the knight, um, in, in turn, you can actually play bishop takes the pawn and save your bishop. So maybe white would recapture the bishop, and you can play knight e5. So that's the purpose of uh, taking the knight after d5, is to control that square to bring your knight to the center rather than retreating it. So if your knight gets attacked, take on f3, and then post your knight in the center on e5. Uh, we'll stop the line there since this is quite a safe position uh, for black to play against that isolated pawn. So that's one possible line against the Goring Gambit. Thanks for watching the video.